Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mario Torn and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 as we are playing as the Kingdom of Sweden. So today the Arms Against Tyranny expansion releases. I'm sure that within a few days some of you guys will have more experience with the new expansion than I do simply because you have more time to play than I've had over the last week or so. And so if you do play a lot over the next couple days, I'd love to hear your opinion on the new mechanics and features, or if you try any of the new focus trees, so Norway, Finland, or Denmark. I'd love to hear your thoughts on those as well, because I actually haven't even taken a look at them yet. I've only played with the Swedish focus tree. Uh, so if you have any uh, opinions regarding those, I'd like to hear them. Also, if you happen to learn anything that might be helpful for the series, then you can post those down in the comments below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode. The first thing we're actually going to go ahead and do is we're going to stop these guys from training, both of them. And then we're going to have them move over to a different port and then start them training again. So these guys have been training up here. And the problem with this one, you can see there's a storm in both of them. But I'm thinking that there might be more penalties here overall. So first of all, you have the, the different C train here. And I don't know if those actually impact training. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they do, but there is the Navy fuel consumption penalty. So that's something to consider. We're spending more fuel by being in this area. And then there's also the fact that there might be ice in these waters during the winter. Of course, we're in the summer right now. Uh, but yeah, we could even move over to here. This is still a shallow sea, and I don't know if uh, there's any more ice over here than there is here. We'll just go here for now. And we'll just try and take a look at it once we get to winter and see if we are getting any penalties from the ice and if it might be worth stopping training because I don't know how bad that affects the ships. Yeah, maybe we want to stop their training during the winter months. Something to look at just because this is taking a long time and a big part of it is because they're spending so much time repairing. I think more than anything it's because of the lack of fuel and so maybe moving out of this and not getting that 20% uh, fuel penalty might help out. So you might have seen there that I did do a trade off camera. That was for five trains. So you don't often see trains on the market. But we're going to trade for them when we do. Because I'm trying to avoid building them if I can, or at least for a little while. I just don't want to spend the factory on it. Because we've got so many other things that we need to get. And so I prefer to just trade for all the trains that we need. So I think these ones here are currently repairing, and so that's the reason why we've got some ships in this area. So we should be able to send these back out to train, and then they'll train here in the lower Baltic Sea once they finish up repairing. And then I'm hoping that'll at least result in less fuel use. Alright, so this one was bypassed because of course we already have that island. This is the focus that we actually got here. And so let's move over here and take a look at what our options are. Because I think we really need to focus on these because we are running out of time here, guys. The war will likely start, at least with Holland, pretty soon, here in a few months. And then the, the conflict in Norway won't take long after that. And so we have two choices. We can go after Denmark or we can go after Norway. And I think it makes more sense to go after Norway just because there's, there's more territory over there. It's easier to defend, and I think that's just the better option, honestly. So let's go that route first. So we're going to go for this one here. This will give us three states, if they agree. That's the three states up here. So it's one, two, and three. And we can see that it does grant us some resources. Ten steel, seven tungsten, and seven more tungsten. Don't know about the factories, probably not a whole lot here, but there might be a few. And so it will be beneficial. Also a bit more manpower, though that's not core territory, so something to consider. But yeah, we'll get those three states if they agree. Now I don't know if this one is impacted by troop numbers, but it's safe to say that it might be. And so therefore we should probably try and get some more troops here deployed. And so let's going to get those training, and then we'll deploy them before we finish that focus, because that's when the event will fire. And then uh, Norway will have to, have to make up their mind on whether or not they want to give us that territory. And if we got more troop numbers, then it might, uh, you know, motivate them to give us what we asked for. All right, so we did get that Concentrated Industry 3. So that's excellent because that's going to not only get us the factory and dockyard output, 
would also get us more space in our states to construct more factories because we are running very, very low at the moment. Uh, so you can see we now have like one space open up in each one of these. And so it's helpful. Uh, so let's go ahead and build more military factories. We're going to do these in all the places where we have the high percentages currently. And we do need another dockyard, I think, as well. So let's get a dockyard building after those. And we'll put that one right here. All right, so that looks pretty good for now. Now we got to assign that one military factory that we constructed. And we're going to put it into, I think, the planes. I know we need to get the trucks. Still need to get the tanks too, but we don't have enough army experience to design them yet. I think it's like 40 something, 48 experience maybe. So yeah, we're not quite there. And so let's go to put it into the planes and then the next ones will go into the trucks since we'll need those for the tanks. Yeah, it looks solid. Uh, that means that we do need to trade for some rubber. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just trade with the British Malaya. Get a little bit of rubber there. Since you know the planes and the trucks are going to need that. We'll keep these guys training for now, because again, we need that army experience. And we did finish up our next level of infantry equipment, so we'll have to get those uh, constructing. But first, let's go and get something else selected. We might just keep this on land equipment, which means we should probably go for the trucks. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the trucks, guys. So that might be the first time we've researched and given any funds for the Volvo MI, MIO. And so that is for the, the trucks specifically. And we got the anti-tank upgrade as well. We already had the medium cannons, so we already had access to those. We weren't waiting on that specifically. I mean, they just wanted this, so we'll have access to the 1940 anti-tank tech. So we still need to get the anti-air one, and I suppose we will. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that. And we'll keep on pumping funds into that MIO as well, which looks like we actually have an upgrade for them. And we just got another tech. We're just flying through these techs right now. We're getting them all around the same time. And so we need to keep on getting these big guns here for our future battleships. And then let me see what we want to get next. So probably just continue go down, going down the artillery branch here. So in addition to some production bonuses while we're building artillery, this also reduces the cost when it comes to political power when we use that. So you see that happen immediately. Instead of negative 0.10, it's negative 0.8 although there's probably a decimal there, so it's probably negative 0.85, we just can't see that. And so yeah, it's gonna, spend a, it's gonna result in us spending less political power. Now because none of those uh, bonuses affect the equipment, we do not need to change anything here with the artillery, but we do need to change up the infantry equipment. We did forget to do that. And so let's go ahead and move to the next level, get that constructed. We do, do need to put some more factories into some of this other stuff here. And we also need to work on some other planes besides just the fighters. Of course, it, it really is pointless having other planes unless you have a good crop of fighters, which we don't. We have like 109 planes. Like, what's the point of having other planes if you can't even use them because they all just get shot down? So that is the reason why I'm focusing on the fighters first. I think that makes the most sense. We did get another dockyard. Let's go ahead and put that into... We're going to do the destroyers. Try and get some more of those built out. All right, so I'm hoping they'll be doing better over here with the fuel. Haven't really noticed that, of course, because we still have zero, so. We do have 20 surface ships now. All right, excellent. And this is just that political advisor who we don't want. And this is the radio pop uh, propaganda, which we don't need right now. So that was a very unfortunate misclick, guys. I meant to say I didn't want to be notified about it, and instead I enacted it. So just wasted that political power because that was that was a waste. There's no other way to to word it, guys. We needed we need so much other stuff. So very unfortunate that I misclicked there because the uh, war support doesn't really help us at all. Not at all, guys. I mean, it gives you bonuses in conflict, but uh, helps us with the manpower, I suppose, a little bit if you got more manpower to to earn. But yeah, very unfortunate misclick there. Because yeah, we are on a very close timetable here. Because the war will likely be starting soon. So yeah, that's that's a bummer. But it happens. Mistakes are made sometimes. Alright, so let's go ahead and get 
maybe infantry equipment, though I think there's other things that we currently need a bit more. Let me also take a look how long we have. This is almost done, so, th so that I don't forget. Let's deploy those troops now. Put them into this army here, get them trained up. And then that'll also show us what we need the most here. So is that reflective? Yeah, it looks like we are doing all right. Yeah, everything isn't too bad when it comes to, to shortages. Well, we actually have the army experience available to design those medium tanks. So I went ahead and took a look at this before we started today's episode. And it turns out that they clearly made some adjustments to the tank designer since I last played Hoi 4. And so we'll, we'll look at all of our options. First, we'll upgrade the MIO so that we get the full max speed that we can get. And we're gonna start with the suspension that gives us the max speed increase. I think this is gonna be the only way that we can do it. Remember, there's a couple stats that we want to have at a minimum level. So the max speed, we want it to be at least eight. I prefer that it's much higher, as I talked about in the previous episode, but I don't think it's gonna be possible due to reliability issues. And that's one of the things I believe that they might have changed. Uh, I know that for a fact that they've changed the armor, and that's the other stat that we want to have at a minimum. We want it to be above 60. It's like 62 or 65 or something like that. And that is because of the medium gun. So if we took a look at that, because we will be getting the medium cannon, we only have the level one available. But the piercing for that is 60. So I'd like to at least be able to have armor that's higher than that. Now, given our enemies might have higher piercing than 60 if they have certain modifiers, but just as a minimum, I feel like we should have uh, you know, 62 or 65 armor. Of course, I would like to have a lot higher than that, but again, I think the reliability is gonna be the problem here. Uh, but yeah, let's go and take a look at the armor, because this is one of the things that they, they definitely changed. So in the last version that I played, cast armor was the best when it came to actual armor rating. Then it was welded armor, and then the rivet armor was the worst. And you can see with the text that it even kind of indicates that. An expensive and time-consuming process that allows for much thicker armor with fewer weak points, while the welded, the welded armor says a faster process than casting while still providing good protection. So it would indicate that this one is, is not quite as good, and that's the way it used to be. However, if you look at these two and compare them, you'll see they both grant the same armor rating, a 30% bonus from cast armor and welded armor, while the riveted armor does not give that 30% bonus. Instead, you just get a production cost reduction here uh, of 20%. So before you'd pick the cast armor, if production cost was not an issue, and if it was, you'd go with the welded armor. But now, that is really not the case. Because if we look at this, not only are you getting the same armor, but with the welded armor, you're getting one more point of defense and one more point of breakthrough. While the cast armor is only granting a 2% increase to the hardness, which is pretty good, it's helpful, but uh, 2% is, is not major, and we're still talking about a 20% production cost for less stats and the same amount of armor. And it seems that now you always want to go with the welded armor unless chromium is an issue, because this requires chromium, while this one does not. And so I think we're gonna go with the welded armor here. But yeah, it's interesting that they, they changed that, at least since the last time I played here. Uh, we do wanna go ahead and change up the turret. So the two choices are the two-man turret or the three-man turret. You do get a very nice breakthrough bonus here with the three-man turret. Uh, the breakthrough goes up by eight, and that's gonna be even higher when you account for the modifiers to the breakthrough. However, it's also gonna decrease the speed. And I think the breakthrough is worth the extra half a point of production, but the speed is something to consider and how that's going to impact the reliability. And so we're just going to go with the two-man turret. We'll take a look at this at the end if we can do it. I just don't think we'll be able to. I don't think we're going to get a secondary turret. The heavy machine gun isn't bad here. The four soft attack for the 1.5 production, really not bad when you compare it to the additional machine guns now where you get only one soft attack for a half reduction. So basically for 1.5, if you had three additional machine guns, you're only getting a three soft attack, but you'd also be getting the six defense, but it takes up three slots. So I think that it is probably worth it to get the heavy machine gun in that case. Uh, however, I think that there's other things that we need a bit more than this. And so we're not gonna get it. And then the small cannon, 
while it does give some very nice bonuses here, the reliability, the reduction there, 10%, is just too much on top of the production cost. And so we're not going to get that either. Uh, we will go ahead and get the radio, of course. This is going to increase defense and breakthrough. Very nice bonuses for the production cost. And then we're also going to get the armor skirts. You know, I think that those are definitely worth the half production, the three armor and the three breakthrough. So grab that. We're going to get the sloped armor. 25% increased armor for a 10% production cost. I think that's worth it. And then the last thing that we're going to get, because we are going to fill this out here, is actually the wet ammunition storage. And that's largely because of our low reliability here. You know, it's currently sitting at 65% and we have not even made any adjustments to the engine or the armor. And so that's the real issue here. And so what I'm thinking, we're going to need to get this at least at four. That gives you the eight max speed and it gets your armor up to 64. Now, the reliability is only 70%. So obviously not where we'd want it to be at. That's certainly a, a bit lower than I'd like. So we're going to have to get the maintenance companies, but even with the maintenance companies, that's still a bit lower than we want, but I don't see any other way to do this, guys. I looked around at it, and you could change up the suspension to try and get the reliability. That's going to drop your, your max speed considerably. So to get it back up to 8, 12, and 4 here, and that gives you not even 2% more reliability. That's a little bit less than 2% from where we're at. Have the same armor and the same speed, for 2% reliability, no other real bonus here. And the production went up by like one, I think. And so really not worth it for 2% reliability, I feel. And I don't know any other option besides changing up to diesel engine, but even that's not gonna help that much. I think it'll increase the reliability by a bit more, but I believe you have to drop the armor. Could keep it a, a little bit lower than eight, I suppose. Yeah, production cost has gone up, and now you're getting like 6% more reliability and losing a little bit of speed there. So yeah, I think the best option is 4 and 4 here with the gasoline engine and yeah, just getting the, the speed from the, the suspension. Now again, we could look at this here, but if we do this, then reliability is going to go down even more as we got to put invest a bit more into the engine to get the speed up. Let me see, I think it's, yeah, you'd have to have seven here. And now reliability is down to 66.8% for, you know, a bit more breakthrough. So I don't think it's worth it in this case. So we're gonna keep this design here. But I messed with this for a while and just couldn't get it to look the way I wanted. So this is what we got, guys. I'd love to hear your suggestions on things I could have done differently to maybe uh, get a better design. Cause yeah, I just, uh, couldn't figure it out with the, with all the changes. It, it's so different, you know, like the armor, for instance, but a lot of things are different when it comes to production costs and some of the different uh, modifiers that the modules grant. So this is what our tank's gonna look like here. I think that's the closest we can get to that without me going through all of them. And then the name is gonna be Jansiden. And so this means Ironside. So the, the person who suggested it, so I would name it after Bjorn Ironsides. So it was only 43 experience. I don't know why I was thinking 48. And then uh, we'll be upgrading our tank MIO. Let's put this down here. We got the, the one factory into it. Clearly you should put another one once we get that built. And since that's at the bottom here, we'll let that go into the tank first before we assign any other factories. All right guys, so we finally have tanks building. Took long enough. 1939 here and Norway did grant us that territory excellent so everything helps and now we're gonna do the United Kingdoms of Sweden and Norway really hoping to get this done before the Germans declare war on them because I really don't know how the uh, the German situation where they get this state how that will impact it might cause some serious problems guys because I want to say this is the original Norway and this is like a new breakaway Norway. So basically, Norway is granted just this territory and becomes a subject of Germany and then is given a bunch of, of troops. And then this is like a new Norway that generally joins the allies and then has the rest of the territory and, and is always quickly conquered by the Norwegian troops. I even helped them and I didn't see a single German division. And we were able to hold up here for a little while. 
but uh, they didn't capitulate, and so that was good. I was able, able to keep them in the war. But yeah, the Germans didn't send troops. Uh, Italy just allied with Germany. Okay. So they'll be in the war when that starts up. Also got the improved heavy battery. Excellent. So I think we're done here. So now we need to go with the small caliber semi armor piercing shells. So we can try and get over to the dual purpose battery in time to build these. This is only 35 days, so that's nice. So get that done and continue to pump funds into that MIO. So yeah, I'm hoping we get this done, guys. Uh, it's 25 of 70 days currently. We got that anti-air as well. All right, so we have all these open up for when we get to 1940. So the next thing to do, we could do the stuff for the close air support and the naval bombers. But again, I don't really see the point when you don't have very many fighters. And so maybe we should just wait till we get the 1940 models. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that's the best option. You could start researching stuff in preparation for that because we're going to want to get the heavy machine guns and the engines. Well, the engines are not unlocked till 1940, but you could start working on the heavy machine guns because you're getting close there. But there's so many other things that we currently need, like the uh, support companies and the Marines. In fact, that's probably what we're going to go ahead and get is the Marines. Because we won't be able to build those if we don't have them, if we don't even have the tech. And we're about to get the naval experience to be able to start investing in naval doctrines. But do you want to get naval doctrines? Or do you want to instead invest that in the marine doctrines? So you can get those a little bit earlier. Because remember, they both take uh, naval experience. And you can't start pumping into the marine uh, doctrines, the special forces doctrines, until you have the technology. Which makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and start investing. Let me just see where we're at. All right, so we have infantry equipment. It's artillery, anti-tanks, and anti-air that we don't have. So let's go and start investing in this other stuff. So we'll get all three of these, another factory, and then after that, maybe we'll put one into the infantry equipment. And then we also need to put more into trucks and tanks there. And then we'll need to start putting our troops where we want them as well. Soviet Union just declared war on Finland. Okay. So we're going to get an event. Oh yeah, we also need to use our civilian factories. But we're going to get an event. Uh, a new event that Paradox added. Regarding this war between the Soviets and Finland. we we'll keep our eye out on that. We're still building the, uh, our eye out for that. Uh, we're still building that one dockyard. So we don't have that yet. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and just continue building the military factories. Because frankly, we don't have all that many. So let's go and get a few more. So about three of them. And you can see we're already running low on space. And so there's the event. Also, they've uh, done that pact with the Soviets. So this is that event. Essentially, the Soviets have accidentally bombed one of our villages near the Finnish border. And so we have to decide how we want to react. So we can say, the world must hear of this act of aggression. Or we can say, we will approach the Soviet embassy carefully to avoid escalation. Or finally, there's a little bit to be gained from confronting the Soviets, and then we'll lose stability and political power. Clearly, that's not the route we want to go. But I feel like it's the Germans that are, are the enemy, the primary enemy at this moment. And so we're going to go with this option rather than this one. And then they'll get a chance to respond, and we'll see what they say. All right, so we did get that tech since it was a quick one. And so now we're going to go ahead and go on to this one. This is a 70-day one. Just continuing trying to get ready for these, these battleships here. And I'm hoping we can build them quick. We'll put all of our dockyards into it. In fact, we're probably going to need another dockyard. In fact, we'll need two more dockyards. Okay, uh, so the Soviet Union did apologize for that bombing. And they grant us one off-map civilian factory, so that's helpful. Allows us to build a bit quicker, which right now, we don't have as many factories as we used to. And so we're not even building a full two lines, let alone this line here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and build some more dockyards. So we're going to put one right here, and then, I know this is a 40%, but we're going to put it right there. In fact, you know what, let's put it on this little island here. And then we'll build 
them like this and kind of stagger them. So you do dockyard, factory, dockyard, factory, so on. And try and get uh, this fleet built up a bit more. Which we can take a look, see how they're doing on the training. Still, still not getting there. Uh, the Nationalists have finished up in the Civil War. So they have won that. Let's look at what else is going on in the war, in the world. So Japan has probably started their naval invasions here. Because they're having a lot of success in China now. And generally that happens once they start the naval invasions. Uh, we finished up our focus, and so we gotta wait for a response from Norway. And if we got time, we might as well try and do Denmark as well. I don't think we'll get it done, but at the very least, you might be able to get that one done. That's 35 days, and that's for this island right here. So we'll try and get it. Uh, we did finish this dockyard as well, so let's go and put this into the submarine. But yeah, we want to make sure we have five dockyards for the battleship once you're ready to, to build that. And this is letting us get these other ships done. Uh, looks like we're short on aluminum, so gonna have to take a look at that. And I thought we would have gotten something from that. A response, it seems that they are our subject, called Swedish Norway. Maybe I just clicked through it, wasn't paying attention, it's not impossible, but they are our subject now. All right, excellent. So we can see uh, how they're doing on making it through their focus tree. They still have a lot of penalties. I believe we might still have a penalty as well that we haven't gotten rid of. That's the severe lack of ammunition reducing our attack and defense. While I would really like to move down these, you know, getting that one and getting these ones particularly so we can get that research slot there, which it seems we won't be able to do it anyways. Because yeah, it does have some requirements that we don't meet. The civilian factory one, clearly it doesn't count the ones you're getting from trade here. Yeah, because we do not have the 35 civilian factories according to this. And also you gotta complete certain certain focuses that we have not done. So we wouldn't be able to get that anyways. But yeah, these are some nice bonuses for our troops. But yeah, I feel like you gotta go down these while you can since it's, you know, time is a factor. All right, so we did get a ton of military factories from Norway here, and so let's go and get them applied. Yeah, this is fantastic. Um, so we still can't do those planes yet, but what we can do is just pump towards uh, the fighters and then trade for what we need there and get the tanks going as well. So we're going to put a lot of factories into those and then infantry equipment. All right, so that looks pretty solid. Yeah, trying to get these built up down here. So let me take a look at how they're doing. Not great. <laughs> Taking forever to get trained there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wait to, to put those ones out there. Although somebody told me that the penalty doesn't actually get any higher when you have multiple wings in the same, uh, you know, in the same base. So I suppose we can train them. Why not? So get them training too. Even though we only have 40 of them. That will grant us uh, some more air experience. Can't do that military parade in Norway, but we don't need to do that. And let me not accidentally check that this time. <laughs> we don't want to do that. All right, so we're gonna save on to, or, or you know, save the the naval experience, and we'll wait with the air experience too. We're getting pretty close to 1940, so we're gonna need that for plane designs. We got the construction, so let's want to get the excavation, get more resources. Hopefully, people will trade with us. Which, speaking of trade, we need to take a look at our resources, because yeah, we are short, very short, at this moment. So we could trade with Norway, but then you're taking up their autonomy. Might not be a factor though, because we can annex them through the focus tree. But it does take it up so fast. But you get a ton of uh, aluminum from them. And that's kind of a problem, because how much it affects autonomy is based off of how much they're giving you. And so we only need 13, and yet we're trading for 45. So maybe it'd be better to wait. I know it's not the most efficient way to go, but I'm just worried about autonomy and having problems there. Because, yeah, we're not planning on annexing them just yet. Because you gotta you get this focus... 
and that unlocks the decision, and then you got to integrate them. And that requires political power. See, I don't think that's the way to go just yet. Especially because we're working on this branch. I'm trying to get Denmark, and I'd like to get Nor or, excuse me, uh, get Finland as well, if we can. So for right now, we're just going to trade with France, because they need the assistance as it is. So we're going to trade with them. Give them some, some civilian factories. I don't know that it will help them at all. This war is taking a little, a little bit longer to, to get started here. Though, in my test playthrough, I think it started right about now. I think it was October or November is when they invaded Poland. So it was a little later than his, the uh, historical timeline. But it uh, seems we're running even later in this one. We'll, we'll see, you guys, what happens here. I think it should be soon. All right, so we've gotten a military factory. We've already built these up to five. Let me see if we want to just keep on working on those or if we want to go ahead and get some trains because you see we don't have enough trains as it is and there's probably not any for trading and I don't even know if this is efficient trading for trains seems like you only get one train with each shipment and so you're really working on it for a while there are some trains here but yeah I don't know if that's better than just assigning a military factory for a little while it's probably the better route, honestly. A lot more trains on the market now. And you don't need a ton. But it also doesn't take very long to build some. So you know what? We can always just get rid of this once we have the number of trains we want. We're just going to build them, guys. Because yeah, I was surprised with how long it took to get that order sorted out. Because the trains are considered like heavy, as you'd expect. And so therefore... The shipments are real slow, and you're investing a lot of, of uh, construction into them. All right, so we got the trucks. So the next thing we should probably get is support companies. We need to get the maintenance companies. Also have to get field hospitals. That's imperative because of our manpower shortages. So we're going to need to get that as well. Hmm. I feel like the, the field hospitals might be a little bit more important in this particular case. Let's go ahead and do that, because yeah, we're always going to have problems with manpower here in Sweden. And uh, Volvo did get their first trait. So you have the, the motorized branch and the mechanized. Now, I was planning on not even getting mechanized when I was going to do the light tanks. I was only going to use motorized. I'm not entirely sure if that's what we want to do in this one now, because we have the, uh, the medium tanks. And so now they're always going to be too slow. Mechanized fits better for the medium tanks. But one issue with that is that we need to, to build them. And we're always going to have the shortage of factories too. Now in the future it might not be as much of a problem. But here you really need to figure out what you want. Like what do you want to invest in? And you know what? We're going to need trucks no matter what. So reducing the production costs would be helpful. It does reduce the reliability there could instead increase the reliability and then production resources needed will be increased. That'd be bad. You know, I think we're gonna do that option between those two. Could get some breakthrough for them as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this one. We'll give up a little bit of reliability in this case. I don't know if that's worth the production cost. Hard to say because you gotta consider the fact that you're losing more of them. You know, because you have lower reliability, so I'm not entirely sure if it's worth the uh, worth that there. All right, so we have the the new the new trucks, so we'll get those upgraded for the five experience, and then get those built. And is there anything else that we need to change up in here? I think that's good. All right, so we got to 77 for little power currently. When does this? Finish up. It is a 35 day focus, so just a matter of days here. And Germany has not declared war. Uh, they did give up that island. Alright, excellent. So with that, we now control one extra civilian factory. We didn't look at the factories we got here. With these, we got one civilian and one military. Plus the resources there. Remember, that is not a, a core state though, so it's occupied state. So you don't get all the resources. All right, so do we want to go ahead and keep going down this route? I mean, if we can complete these in time, I would think that we wouldn't be able to. I think they're going to declare war in Denmark. But they might still be able to grant this to you. I'm not entirely sure. Let me just see if they can do it 
as a subject. I'm not seeing anything that says they can't do it as a subject. So why not? Because yeah, this would grant us Iceland and Greenland. And then uh, we also get these islands over here, the Faroe Islands. So yeah, it's, it's helpful. Uh, we got another dockyard, excellent. And we are almost to 1940, guys. Uh, let's put this into, I feel like we got a good crowd of submarines. Let's put this into the destroyers. We're gonna need those against the Germans. And uh, also we need to train up these ships we have here. Still none of them up to the that first experience level there. All right. So yeah, going kind of slow with that. And uh, one nice thing about stacking the naval experience is we'll have that for the, the battleships. Because we are almost ready, guys. You know, we're going to get this, and then after this is done, we can just work on the battleships, and I believe we got everything. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because there's no 1940 text. Well, there is the improved dual purpose. So you might want to get that, too. So you got these two texts, but yeah, these are later. And then there's nothing else you need equipment-wise outside of the 1940 heavy ship hole. All right, so, uh... Yeah, not doing too bad here, getting the stuff that we need. And this doesn't take that long to get. That's 66 days. Working on getting those field hospitals. Poland refused the German ultimatum, so that means war has started. Okay, so it started a few months later. So, I mean, they gave us more time. I'm not complaining. Getting these troops trained up, and we should probably go ahead and get the, the troops moved where we want them as well, just in case. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, if they declare war in Norway, I believe they still will, despite the fact that they're a subject of ours. I think they still declare war in Norway, and so we need to be prepared for this. So let's go ahead and move all our troops around to where we want them. We want to protect against naval invasions, and then we're probably going to want to go ahead and set up a new army here and, and stop them from training. So let's go ahead and get these guys changed to a blue color, different icon as well. And then we're going to want them up on this border here, just in case it goes down the way it, it does when they're independent. I don't really know how it works, honestly. I have no idea how, how it works if they're a subject. We'll just have to wait and see, because I didn't do this in my test playthrough, I did it a little bit differently. So we're gonna put these guys in there as well, and you know, also let's put the cav. The rest of those we'll leave over there training. And then we need troops that are over here. Currently have, well we got two there. Okay. So I think they're fine for now, but you know what, let me put this in a new army anyways, just in case. And so they'll just be, ah, they'll be purple. So we'll leave them there so that they're not training. And then these guys here can actually go over to this this front here. Now, one thing we do have to consider is supply. And so I have discovered, because I actually had to fight Norway in my other playthrough, that I had some serious supply issues. Once this is, you know, lost, if it happens the way it does, then you won't have that supply hub. So you have to expect that we won't have it. And then you have this one here, and it just can't reach over to here, even with the trucks. And so you need a supply hub right there. But I'm hesitant to build one when we don't know what's going to go down here. Like, if we were doing it the same way I did it in my test playthrough, then I would. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to go down, guys. But we might have so little supply here, we can't even keep these guys here without problems. Let me just take a look if we put them on. Okay, so that seems to be enough for now. I did have a lot more troops here, though. And so that might have been why I was having some, some supply issues. But once I got the hub there, I didn't have any more problems. All right, so we've gotten that factory built. We want to see what we're going to get next. Probably more military factories. I think we'll be good on dockyards for now with the, uh, what do we currently have? Yeah, there'll be eight. And then we get the ones from the uh, focuses. And that'll be fine for now. We really need military factories, guys. So let's just focus on that for now. So we're going to build those there. And we'll build one here as well. And I suppose we got this territory too, though it's not great. So we probably don't want to build there before we build in the rest of our territory. Also, it's not core territory, so something to consider. So build another one right there, and that looks pretty solid. We still do need to get the radar stations. We only built the one here, and so that covers this area, but doesn't cover anything else. So we might want to get another radar station going. 
This will help us detect the German ships and also helps our planes in the air. It's another thing to, to consider. So that one's good there. I'm not sure if I want to do it here in the capital or like here with the, the penalty and the fact that you might end up losing it. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do it here just because you can build faster there. And we'll keep that down at the bottom, but another thing to consider is uh, fortifications. We want to build some forts here, because otherwise we're going to have trouble stopping them. And so we'll get a level 5 fort right there. I think we have a focus that grants a few fort levels. And then this we might want to put up a little bit higher so you get this done in a respectable time. So we'll put it over here and get that worked on. Alright, so let's want to get this factory assigned. Let me see how we're doing on shortages. I mean, we're solving it very, very, very slowly. And infantry equipment's also an issue, so we're going to put that factory into that. And yeah, I'm not sure what's lighting up here. I'm guessing it's something... yeah, it's here. So we're going to just build that real quick. Just to make it go away, because it bugs me. There we go. When it's all lit up like that, you know, telling me like there's something I'm supposed to be doing. Let's take a look how these ships are doing. Okay, I mean, not the progress I would have liked to see. What about the planes? How are they doing? Yeah, again, just losing more planes than we can build here. Although it seems that the, the, the new planes we build are going into this one rather than that one. And Finland sweet, uh, seeks Swedish support. Try and say that 10 times fast. And so we can say we must retain our neutrality or if public support is what they have, send uh, volunteers and equipment and that will grant them manpower and we'll lose manpower that we don't really have to grant them. We're doing pretty shoddy on manpower. In fact, we're going to have to change up our conscription laws once we get the 150 political power. Where Finland's cause is, ours, uh, is our cause and then we'll declare war on the Soviet Union. Yeah, probably don't want to do that. I don't know that we're going to do any of these guys. I don't want to give them any manpower. They're going to lose this for sure. I mean, they're not going to win it. I mean, they're they're holding them off all right, I suppose. Yeah, they're not doing bad. Better than I expected. But again, what's going to happen here is they're just going to do a naval invasion. And once they do that, it's over. And so they're not going to win it. So yeah, we're not going to do that, guys. We must retain our neutrality. We need our own manpower. I know that 8,000 manpower is not a lot, but as Sweden, it kind of feels like a lot, doesn't it? We have so little. And if we got these troops done, we do not. Oh, one of them's done. Yeah, I'm going to send them over here because this is not enough to cover all those provinces I signed them. All right, so it looks like Germany is going to invade the Low Countries first and then Denmark. So not as they did it historically. That is often the way they seem to do it in Hoi Four, though. They quickly wrap this up, go into France, and then they deal with Denmark while they're doing that. We did get those field hospitals, and we are in 1940 as well. Need more of the support companies, clearly. But with 1940 now opening up, I feel like we need to get the 1940 techs. And so let's get ships first, because they take so long to build. And so let's go ahead and do the and to research as well, all the stuff we have to get for these. So let's want to get the, the battleships going. 113 days. And basically, once we finish up with this, we'll have them do the next tech. So we'll have two tech slots going towards ships. As part of building a fleet as a minor power, you do have to invest kind of heavily in the beginning. I don't like where our convoys are currently at. But, yeah, I think we're okay for now. Let's just put in the submarines. And then we do have another submarine built. Let's want to put that into the training force and finally look at this we got some ships done took us long enough we got it done guys wow 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 <laughs> that took a really long time all right so put them over here and I, I suppose what we can do is get our generals assigned i haven't done that yet and also use the command power to maybe promote some of them so over here we could put the hill fighter eric off at home He's our highest level guy, also has the highest attack. However, might want to do somebody else because these are not hills. Got a commando here. Hmm. 
Let's start leveling these guys up in preparation for them to be leading the tanks. I think this is the guy we'd use for the tanks. Now he has a higher defense. Yeah, I think this is the, the one you'd use. Because remember, they get the combined arms experts. That helps with the motorized and mechanized. So let's go and promote both of them, or upgrade them. Get those traits for them. Also our field marshals. I don't think we want any of these. At least not right now. Yeah, maybe start leveling up this guy here. Yeah, it'd be helpful. Though, I will admit that this guy, the defense is a little bit more useful than the, the planning speed bonus. This is what we'll do. We'll use this guy, and then when we get tanks, we'll use him. Because in this case, the defense might be a little bit more useful at this moment. And then we have our field marshals. We need to upgrade them. And so we've got two, and one of them is our king. And so I think we should make one focused on offense and one focused on defense. It makes the most sense to have the king focus on defense since he already has that max entrenchment bonus. There's really nothing else here. I suppose he's got a supply consumption point. He also has the winter specialist, so that's nice. So clearly they are better field marshal. And so yeah, we'll get the offensive doctrine here. Uh, winter expert's helpful. But yeah, I think the offensive doctrine is the most useful for our field marshal. And then for the king, we'll get the defensive doctrine, so it had that max entrenchment. And then we'll assign both of these guys right now. And so with this army, they're gonna have our offensive guy, Oscar. And then this army will be led by the king. All right, excellent. And then these guys here can go in the defensive one too. So look at that max entrenchment bonus. Uh, we don't have anybody assigned here just yet. I guess we'll just assign whoever our top defender is, which it looks like this guy is. He's got a, a four defense. So we have him in charge. Oh well, yes, I did want to take a look at the C here and see if there's any penalties. There is one up here. But, I don't know how much that was impacting it. You do get the attrition, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know that the Arctic water was giving us that big of a penalty. But still, it's clearly better to not get that. So yeah, it's better that we, we went there. That moved the, uh, the ships that were training. And uh, then I've gotta go through ice. Poland has capitulated already, so that didn't take very long. A little bit longer than, than it did in history. I think it took them here... I believe it started in early December, didn't it? So, like two months here in the game. So a little bit longer. Poland put up a, a decent fight. I suppose they had a few more months to prepare, so there was that. Uh, so yeah, we don't want to do anything because we need the manpower. And there's the white piece here as well. Finland lost this territory. So they lost that, and... Uh, now they're back at peace. And now the Dutch have been attacked. We'll join the Allies and they'll be defeated very quickly. Yeah, we can watch that happen. And the Belgians have joined the conflict too. And they will also be defeated fairly quickly, though maybe not as quickly as the Dutch. Especially the French can get in here and help, but it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna get a military factory. So it's going to get this assigned. Still don't have the, the tax for the other the other planes, but uh, you know, as you can see here, guys, we only have the two air wings at the moment, so it's not like we have a huge fighter force. I mean, that's going to help us in the skies a little bit, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know that getting other planes would really be all that useful again if you can't defend them. Uh, so it seems that we're still short on some of the stuff. Yeah. I think it's the efficiency still a bit down here. A little surprised we still have those shortages, but let's go ahead and get that factory into the tanks, because yeah, we don't have very many of those yet. Still need to design them. That's why I'm saving this army experience. And Denmark did hand over their overseas territories. All right, excellent. So we've gotten control of all of those. So we'll take a look exactly what we got here in a minute. Let's first select the next focus which is Danish alignment. I don't think we're gonna complete this in time, guys. Yeah, I really don't think so. And even if we did, what happens? Like, cause they automatically become a subject of Germany. I'm gonna try, I'm not gonna just give up and not even try it, but I really don't think 
we're going to get it done in time. I think Denmark will already be defeated by the time we do it. But let's try, just in case, guys. We don't know what's going to happen for sure. Uh, so we did get a military factory here. All right, excellent. And then, of course, we have them as a subject. And then we got Greenland as well. And so that is 14 aluminum. Okay, that's really helpful. We didn't get anything here. Just the military factory. No factories here. Just the aluminum. But yeah, it's all helpful. Excellent. So we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we still need to, to trade. We can tick back one of these. And besides, France will be defeated soon. Once they're through uh, Belgium, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. They'll be done for. The Hungarians have joined the German faction. Yeah, we'll see France capitulate here very soon. All right, so let's gonna get the improved dual purpose. This is gonna take uh, 65 days, which it's 80 days to get the battleship, so pretty good timing there, not bad. It does mean we're using two of our research slots for ship stuff, and then I guess we're also using one for Marines, which we almost have done. And so we should probably get some of these assigned so I don't have to keep on dipping in here. I feel like we need another one put into fighters. Should always also put one into the military, or excuse me, into the uh, the tanks. And then, how are we doing on infantry equipment? Not great. I think uh, I think we're spending a lot here on these guys. I think that's what's going on, probably. So let's go ahead and invest some factories so this will get done. Yeah, that looks good. And then we do need to trade again, although probably shouldn't trade with the, the French because they're done for. And so let's set up a trade with somebody else. How about the British? So we'll do that. Short on the rubber, but I'm not going to trade for it. It's only three. And we did just make it into to March here, and we got the Marines. All right, excellent. So we still have not gotten the support weapons. It's kind of a, a big deal not having that yet. So we need to get that. We also need to get support companies, though. I think you got to get the support weapons at this point because we, yeah, we got the 50% uh, modifier to it. I know we need so many other things, but war is closing in, guys, and I don't think we'll be able to avoid it as you can if you do things differently because I think uh, Norway is going to pull us into the conflict. Now, we don't need to do this military parade here. We have, like, no manpower here. I think the problem is actually our garrisons because you know we're getting all that extra territory. And I'm not entirely sure if we're using the most efficient one at the moment. Yeah, I don't want to use that one. The cab would be the better option here. So let's go and switch over to that. That'll help us a little bit, but I'm thinking the civilian oversight is going to need to be changed. We spent some time, you know, getting the compliance up, and now let's move over to the local police force. That'll help us out some. Yeah, I think that's the best way for us to do this right now. So switch over to that. And just try and get some of our manpower back. Yeah, that got us back like 11,000 or something like that. So it's helpful. And it's going up as well. So yeah, switch over that and get a little bit of manpower here. Because yeah, we, uh, we need it. Now even after we change, it's still helpful even after we change our, our, uh, our law there. And it looks like France has pitched as soon as Paris has fallen. And so now they've been defeated as well. And Rudolf Hess has survived. Gone to uh, Britain. Now we can go ahead and start spending these now. Alright, so we got rid of that, which means that we're probably not moving up on this as fast. We're at 66% currently. Do we want to start working on these here? We also have this one. I never did finish here, so I think we should get this last one. And as for which one we're going to get, probably just the aggression one. Get the attack up. Yeah, we'll just do that one. Now for the Spirit of the Army, we should probably do the Officer Corps. Army experience gain will be increased, daily command power gain, and land doctrines will be cheaper, which is something we'll be working on eventually if we can ever get all these divisions designed. Uh, we do need to change the divisions, uh, but with that, we barely have any uh, experience. Uh, I can take a look. I suppose we could get 
one thing changed up. You know what, guys? Let's get rid of the support artillery here. Yeah. We already have three things of artillery here, and why have that slot taken when you could change it to field hospitals, and then that leaves it open for logistics and something else? I think that's the better route to go, honestly. So this is what it's going to look like, guys. Yeah. And that'll get us back some of our guns, which we're short on. And so that'll be helpful. So let me just take a look at where we stand now. All right, so I think we're not as short as we were. And we do need to train these guys. And it's unfortunate we still have to train these troops. We don't need all these guys training though. We can put some of them over here just to get enough on every front. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Let's get another guy over there. We do want to leave somebody in the capital as well. So let's move this guy over here. Two guys over here. And one over to here. Looks like we did finish up those forts as well, so they're not getting across that easily. But we got all these ports we got to defend, so... Man, yeah, war could break out any moment. Because I think they're going after Denmark next, guys. We do have the political power. All right, excellent. So now we can change up our conscription. Super helpful. Get us some manpower. Very much needed manpower. But the things I want to, to build are not designed yet. The Marines, which I don't know how many of these we'll actually be able to get. Or how large they'll be able to be. So yeah, I want to, to work on those. And the tanks as well. We don't have any army experience for changing them up. So I don't know. We'll see what we can do, guys. First, let's go ahead and go into the doctrines here. And maybe start working on the Marines. Even though we don't have them. And this enables the Pioneers. The Pioneers are a support company. So we could get those. And then we'd probably want to boost the Amphibious. Because you do have to make a choice here. Do you want the jungle or the amphibious effect? Clearly, we want the amphibious one. And so that would be helpful. And also, if you get this, we could design them for cheaper. And these are fairly cheap as well. They're not as expensive as the normal naval doctrines. Those are 100. These are only 60. So you can get these a little bit quicker. We can get two of these right now and be pretty close to being able to get the other ones. Though we do need to have experience to build those battleships, so I don't want to spend uh, any more now. Because uh, we're pretty close to getting what we need here. Uh, 41 days. And then we'll be able to get the battleships constructing. So that'll be nice. Having those building. Alright, so let's go and put these guys into their respective fleets. And see if anybody else is done training. And it looks like we got a few destroyers done. So we'll pull those out. Put them over here for now. Still no submarines done though. Yeah. It's going kind of shoddy with the, the training. I recall it going a little bit better in my test play there. I don't know what I did differently. Uh, so we did get the excavation. Still have to get the advanced machine tools. Also have to get the improved computing machine. I think we're going to get that first. You know, production efficiency camp is obviously really nice. But yeah, I think we're going to get this one. Yeah, let's go and go after that. But then we got to get this one and this one. Jeez. I didn't know we didn't get that. Okay. So uh, clearly need some stuff here. So we'll get that, because you got to get the research speed. You want to get that, you know, as soon as possible, obviously. But we're about to have a few more techs done. So there is, is some things opening up. And maybe we won't do naval techs for a little while. I know we still got a lot of stuff we got to get, but we, got, we need to get the planes, guys. Because they have 1940 planes have opened up, too. So just so much stuff. 1940 always opens up a lot of things for you to get. All right, so... Not a lot of places left to build, guys. Uh, so yeah, we're building these two places. Working on getting the radar built up. And there we go. Germany has declared war on Denmark. And we are one day away from finishing that up. So what is going to happen with it? Because they have already given up. It's immediate. So let's just see. 
What happens? All right, so they did declare war on us. So we are now at war with Germany. All right, we finished this focus here. So let's just read this. The fate of German protectorate of Denmark. The Danish government has been weakened enough to the point that it is no longer able to properly stand against a concentrated effort by us to assert our dominance over them. As we were once subject to the Danes, so will they now become subjects of us. We just need to decide on what to do with them before delivering our ultimatum. So you say we will use them as a buffer state. Hmm, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen here because they've already been, you know, subjugated. I guess we'll see. Uh, so we need to select our next focus. Which I guess you want to start integrating. Well, that costs a little power. And we still haven't done Finland. And so you might want to go ahead and start doing them. But we also have, like, all these problems right now. Like, tons and tons of problems at the moment. And I could have swore we had gotten... No, we didn't get rid of that. We still have it. And then we'll get the penalty. Wow. Okay. So that's a problem. Is that clearly it's going to modify it. I don't think it's supposed to do that. I think it's supposed to get rid of it. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to get rid of it if you don't have it anymore. Maybe not, though. I don't know. So to get rid of it so you don't get all those penalties, you got to do this one here. And that does allow you to construct military factories and dockyards faster. But we've almost ran out of slots for building those anyways. It does grant you war support, but we're now at 99%. And our stability is at 35%. And this is going to take it down by 10%. So, yeah, we're in a little bit of an issue here. Uh, that's a big problem here. Because, yeah, this is going to take stability down by even more. All right, so that's, that's unfortunate because I really wanted to come down here so we can build those uh, battleships faster and then get this one. So we can get a, a battleship going at 60%. Yeah, that would be incredibly helpful. All right, just kind of limited, unfortunately, but clearly we should get rid of that 10% uh, penalty, and this also grants us a production efficiency cap, so I think we should get that. That's pretty useful. But yeah, definitely facing some issues here, and we are now at war with Germany, so we're going to slow this down. We're going to have a lot of things happening, and unfortunately those things will be happening in the next episode, though I am tempted to play just a little bit longer just to see... All right, so we want to put them here for now. Let them repair. Same thing with these guys, and then we'll put them out there. And then we also want to stop these guys from training. So stop them, since uh, we could be facing naval invasions at any moment. And yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen with uh, Norway, because they're already at war with them. We'll see if this little uh, state gives up. If it doesn't, then we'll move all those troops, because obviously we won't need them there anymore. But I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. Uh, these guys didn't fully train. I'm going to risk training them, because as of right now, Denmark is neutral. And I don't know if they'll get pulled in or not. We'll just have to see. we got to see what happens with this event, actually. So let me give this like a day or two. And they are a Swedish protectorate at war with Germany. Okay, so <laughs> that's interesting because they're already here. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of messed up. Because I'd like to defend here, but what we could try and do is defend here and then slowly retreat and just kind of cause them as much problems as possible. There's no dockyard here. so not too worried about a, them doing a naval invasion right there. Okay, so basically we need to send our troops across. And I'm thinking the state is not going to be given to them. And so we can go ahead and pull these troops uh, over to here as well. And we'll defend as much as Denmark as we can. See if we can at least defend uh, the islands as possible. Particularly if we can shut down the sea here. Though I don't know if we can do that. Because uh, our fleet is not comparable to the German fleet. I don't know if we can see their fleet size. They have, let's just say, 80 ships or so. While we have half that. Now given their fleet is getting destroyed by the British at the moment. And we could join the Allies. Yeah, they are willing to let us join. And while we might eventually want to create our own faction, we can always leave the Allies. The only bad thing about joining the Allies is we might find ourselves in wars we don't want to be in. 
Now, Japan's not going to declare war on us. They'll declare war on Britain and other allied states. And then they'll try and pull us in. We could just turn those down. Because I'd like to be able to still trade with Japan. I know that's kind of a little bit of a traitor's action there. But yeah, I'd prefer to, to not be at war with Japan so we can still get rubber. Because, you know, rubber is always, always an issue. And particularly because I didn't invest in the rubber tax. And as you can see, we're already incredibly short. There's so much stuff we don't have. And so if we had gotten those, then what would we have not gotten? Something to consider, guys. But yeah, our fleet isn't bad. Yeah, it's really not bad. And if the British can get through here and help, then I think we can defeat the Germans. Though we don't have the air support that I was hoping to have at this point. We never got the naval bombers. So something to consider. There's a lot of options here open to us. Some of them are quite risky. And so we got to decide how we want to do this. Uh, also, our, our planes did not finish training. We do have 46 more planes to replace losses, because you know there's going to be losses here, guys. And we probably just want to put those in the skies now and not even train them anymore. So let's actually stop that. All right, so yeah, we're at war, guys. And it's unfortunate that it always happens at the end of the episode. I, I promise I don't plan it that way. I don't plan to end it right when the war starts and it starts getting really exciting here. And then you got to come back. To, to see the conflict. I don't plan it that way. It just, it just happens. We always leave on these cliffhangers. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, to doing the war against Germany. Then uh, three episodes of peace. I guess four if you count this one since it's been you know, a peaceful episode. And so now, finally, we're in to World War II against Germany and Italy, as well as a few other little states. Though they haven't been pulled in yet. Currently, it's just Germany. But we can, we can bet the other ones will be joining them soon. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.